Hello everyone. So this is again Bhupesh Sharma. Thanks for tuning in. in. So today, as per the you know demands for by a lot of uh, the colleagues, we are starting a new chapter all together, which is called as uh, getting uh, you know starting everything from scratch for Kubernetes. I mean, I mean starting with the architecture and how it is being placed in this you know, DevOps world. So today, I will be explaining the, first of all the architecture of this entire Kubernetes orchestration tool, and then we'll take it further from there. So how I can simply understand the architecture? You can simply come out to the Google and type this Kubernetes architecture. Then you'll understand. Uh, and then first link that you got it is the uh, the authentic uh, Kubernetes route, which is being created by this entire Kubernetes is being created by Google. So you'll get this authentic link. So I'll be explaining everything from this piece only. So I've created a small PPT and I'll explaining with the help of this one slider what is the entire architecture of this you know orchestration tool. Now, if you see, uh, this is my the entire architecture diagram. I'll just show you that the left hand side is the control plane. When I say control plane, this is the brain of this entire Kubernetes orchestration tool. And the right hand side, this is the these are all worker nodes. So as you see, our cluster which we cause which we created is a single node cluster. See, it is only having one node. It can have multiple nodes since uh, if you are you know creating any multi-node cluster. Which is having three nodes or two nodes in a single control plane. So, uh, so that is how it, it it's being placed. So in our case, it is actually mini cube. So it is having single node worker node, and the remaining is the your brain of your entire orchestration tool. So let's get into the detail of this brain. So first of all, you can see this component API. So this is called a cube API server. This is actually the front end of this brain, and it communicates with everyone. When I say communicate, communicates with the node. To schedule pods or to schedule any application to their to their respective worker nodes, and then it communicates with the the controller manager, the HCD, and the scheduler and the other thing. So this is actually the front end API of your Kubernetes. So this is actually the API call, API server. Now the next item which is very very important is the HCD. HCD is the is the backend database of this entire uh, Kubernetes uh, cluster, which stores all the data into the key value pairs. This is the etcd. You normally say etcd cluster. It's a three component basically. Now there's another component called a scheduler, SCH, you know, HED. So this is actually responsible for if any new pod is created, make sure that pod is being scheduled to run on any particular node. Node is nothing but a you know operating system. So this is the responsibility of a scheduler. Now the controller manager. Now this again very very important topic. We don't want to put everything onto the Cube API server. You know, uh, component all the load. So we have this controller manager. What it does? Uh, there's a small write-up. So suppose node. Uh, so there are four components under cube controller manager. I'm talking about this component as of now. The first of all is node controller. What is this node controller? Suppose if my this node is getting down, so it will automatically inform to my you know brain that this is down. Please you know reschedule it or maybe just you know scale it. So this is the functionality of this node controller. There's another called as job controller uh, under the hood. Job controller maintains all the jobs, cron jobs which are being scheduled on any particular namespace. Uh, suppose there's a, there's a job that uh, runs every midnight to clean up the extra space. So there is a job scheduler will take care of that stuff, right? And then there's an the endpoint controller also. Endpoint controller. What is this component? Another component is the third piece of this. It is actually uh, providing a you know connectioning or uh, the same link between the services and the pod now, what is the service and what is the pod suppose you spin up a uh, pod uh, by by an application and then application is exposed to a particular port 80 so that is that communication is being provided by endpoint uh, slice controller service account controller is something which creates a normal uh, default service account for any new namespace which is getting created now these are all about four components are there another, another component called as TCM, what is con cloud controller manager? Now this component is completely absent in Minikube because it is not responsible for it is not available for local, you know, standalone cluster. Suppose if you are spinning up a cluster from Amazon, GCP, or from Azure for that matter, then it's responsible for communication with those uh, cloud components. So it is actually absent in Minikube. If we talk about node components, no node component is what are the components in the worker node? Now there are two important components inside the worker node: the kubelet and the kube proxy. Now kubelet is an agent which is running on every every worker node, and it is responsible for that. Make sure that whatever 
specifications we are giving in pod that will get get fulfilled when i say that my pod should run with three containers then all those three containers should get you know executed so container is the lowest level and on top of it we have pod right so the pod can contain one container or pod can contain three containers three small uh, you know operating uh, operating system basically the kubelet is responsible for that a kube proxy is again uh, responsible for uh, it is a network proxy that is responsible for communicating within the pod within the namespace so suppose we have three pods and that kind of communication or networking will happen with the help of kube proxy api and ultimately these two communicates with this api server which is the brain so you can see the you know arrow flow so these two are communicating with this so this is these are the node components earlier we saw all the control plane components there are only two kind of uh, things one is brain other was the worker nodes which is working on the assignation of this uh, brain and finally the container runtime now container runtime is nothing but a software that runs inside every container so suppose above we created three containers within the one pod now inside every container this is the container d container d is the container runtime which is running in the latest version of uh, you know kubernetes version which is actually 127 as of now so this is quickly uh, telling you about the architecture i don't want to spend more time because so these are the container runtimes so currently it is on container d in our kubernetes latest version yes version you can see i think 127 127 is a stable version see so and it is operated on container d runtime so quickly summarizing everything we have only two two components control plane component which is called as brain and the uh, worker component which is called as node component worker nodes and it has five components and the worker has two components and ultimately uh, it is everything that is running on the container at time yeah, so that is all about the kubernetes architecture will again uh, circle back on the next session where we did talk about more onto the pods services and deployment and stateful that but still uh, this entire documentation is placed in this github repository which is there into the description of this video please do like comment what or what else you want from this kubernetes series will help you to answer and thanks for watching thank you bye bye